This question is actually about an experiment to do with standing waves in closed pipes. But you didn't need to know any of that to get the right answer. What it really is about is can you calculate and combine percentage uncertainties? So I really like this question. I think it's quite straightforward. It's actually all about estimating uncertainties. Okay, so really, it's not really about this experiment, but let's just briefly talk about experiment, make sure we know what's going on. Essentially, we've got a tube here, which is a closed end tube, and when closed end tube have standing waves formed in them, they end up with quarter wavelength standing waves. So this length here, the length of the tube, is actually lambda over four. And essentially what they've done is they've just used good old V is F lambda to work out V for the speed of sound here obviously converting that into meters and multiplying that by four before you multiply it by the frequency. So um, student A says the results show the speed of sound increases as the frequency of the sound increases. And student B says the speed of sound should be the same for each frequency. Well, our hunch is this one's correct. Okay, but um, let's see why that is by estimating the uncertainties. Essentially, yes, this is a larger number than this one. But is that due to an actual physical trend or is that due to uncertainties in the measurement? In other words, there's a random kind of change here. Okay, so what you need to know then is how do I estimate uncertainties? Well, for each point in this case, we've only got one result. So we can't use something like half the range or the distance from the mean to give us our uncertainty. So we're looking for if we can sensibly estimate the uncertainties in these results and then know how we combine uncertainties when we're using a product or a division with two quantities. So let's firstly talk about the frequency. So this could be as high as 256.5 or it could be as low as 255.5. So the frequency could be plus or minus 0.5 hertz. So the total possible uncertainty in the frequency is one hertz. Similarly with the length, this could be as high as 0.95 or as low as 0.85. So in our length, we're plus or minus 0.05 centimeters. We don't need to convert into meters here uh, because we don't actually have to work out the wave speed. We just need to work out percentage uncertainty in a second. So delta L is clearly 0.1 centimeters. So this is a sensible estimate of the uncertainty. Now I suggest for you, if you are not sure if you are doing the right estimation of the uncertainties, justify it. So maybe write down here, half a sig fig used, or half a scale division used. When we ever we do a product or a division with two quantities, we cannot add the absolute uncertainties. And we can't add the absolute uncertainties because, well, they're not even the same quantity. Can't add frequency to length. That's completely meaningless. The world, the universe doesn't work like that. So we can't mix our dimensions. But we can add percentage uncertainties. So your next part is to work out the percentage uncertainty for frequency first, and then for length. And this is a skill that they are definitely going to be testing in this exam. It's not tricky either. So this percentage uncertainty in frequency is delta F over F. And this percentage uncertainty is delta L over L. So delta F we've decided is one hertz frequency. Now which one should we use? Well, it makes sense here to go ahead and use one right in the middle because we're trying to work out whether this and this lies within the uncertainty of this middle reading here, or if there's actually a trend that should be lower and that should be higher. Wouldn't worry too much about that, but if you've got a range of results, it does make sense to use the middle one as your kind of your, your um, quantity for estimating this. So I'm gonna do one over 320 there, and here I'm gonna use length, delta length being 0.1, and the length there being 25.6. And hopefully now you realize I can use centimeters because I'm just doing a ratio. So go to the calculator, times that by 100 to give me a percent, 0.31%, okay? And then next one here, 0.1 over 25.6. Again, why not just multiply that by 100 to give me it as a percent straight away. 
is about 0 0.4, 0 0.39%. Okay, I'm not quite finished, but I have picked up a few marks, estimated my uncertainties, calculated my percentage uncertainties and my two quantities. Now I can go ahead and add those together to give me the percentage uncertainty in speed, which is 0 0.31 plus 0.39, in other words, 0.70%. Well, what is my upper and lower bound for this then? That hopefully it's not too much of a challenge for you. 328 times 0 0.0, 0 Seven giving me 2.296 or 2.3. So add 2.3 to this and take away 2.3, 330.3. And my lower bound of speed is 325.7. Now all of these lie within that. So my final statement is going to be this is not a trend. This, all of these lie within the acceptable uncertainty. Okay, I hope that all makes sense to you. So I'll maybe just tidy that up ever so slightly. So 0.7% of 328 is uh, essentially two. So V is 328 plus or minus two meters per second. Okay, so B is correct. I know I can't stand how little room they give me as well for my maths. Remember, if we ever need to use a quantity to do a calculation to make another quantity, we have to combine the percentage uncertainties. So you need to be really good at calculating those and just be aware you add the percentage uncertainties, not the absolute uncertainties.